Yeah, welcome everybody. So to this session, so the first talk is, uh, is about uh, the state of the network. So I'm Francois Pruner, uh, and I've been working on the network uh, since quite a long time. And I will do the presentation also with Jeroen Tischler here uh, from Geocat, and uh, also uh, Florent Gravin from Camp to Camp. Uh, yeah. So. Currently, Geo Network, we are work mainly working on two uh, main versions uh, which are actively supported. So, in uh, 2022, we have been making a regular release of the version 3.12 uh, almost every, every month, every two months, uh, which is a, a version mainly maintained by uh, the GeoCAD team. And uh, we are also uh, making a version of uh, GeoNetwork 4. Uh, and the last one is a 4.2.0 uh, made in, in May. So uh, th three, version 3.12.6 three, uh, is mainly uh, improving the, the quality of the application, uh, testing in more detail the metadata workflow, which is a quite new feature in, uh, in version 3, and uh, improve this part. We are also uh, adapting the application to the Inspire uh, validator changes. So this is more for the European users uh, of Geo Network. Uh, Michel Gabriel, also committer in Geo Network uh, from GeoCat, is working a lot on accessibility, and there will be a talk uh, later on this uh, during the Phosphor-G here. Uh, we are also adding support for new authentication system. Uh, key clock, open ID is also something uh, some of the contributors are working on and uh, improving uh, the way you configure maps in, even in multilingual catalogs. Sometimes you want specific maps depending on language and stuff like this. In 3.12 we also uh, do security updates, uh, updating libraries uh, when we, we can. The main differences between version 3 and version 4 is the move to Elasticsearch. So we are not using the uh, homemade uh, search index uh, as in version 3 using the library uh, Lucene. So in version 4, we are using Elasticsearch for the index of the catalog. Uh, and in version 4.2.0, uh, the main uh, uh, improvement we made uh, is, was focusing on multilingual search and be able to uh, better support searches when your catalog is in one or more language or a mix of languages. Sometimes everything is not uh, translated. So we also improve search results and also the way we are making sometimes nested queries. So in, on the screenshot, for example, we are uh, displaying uh, some child records of one record. So this is also some part of the search API we, we improved. Uh, we also worked uh, on projects like uh, Wallonia Region, EEA, uh, IFREMER on improving the way we are uh, showing uh, all the relation between records. So when you have uh, series, products, collection, or whatever group of records you are uh, creating in your organizations, and how you navigate to uh, focused uh, data sets for a temporal series or uh, other type of uh, collections. Um, we also improve the way we navigate between services, source data sets, or when you supersede a record, so you can also follow um, uh, which uh, data sets uh, replaced another one when there is a new release, a new version, or a new edition. So it depends a, a lot on um, how uh, organizations are describing the, the information. So here uh, we have a, a series which is composed of, of three data sets uh, about uh, land cover. Land cover. And we can also create summary information like the table at the bottom of the screenshot, which can list formats and uh, link to services and stuff like this. Uh, in some catalog, we have also more and more information in the metadata record described. And at some point, it, was, it could be uh, quite confusing to search for all the links we have in the metadata record. So we try to improve the way we are uh, displaying 
uh, all the links which may have been uh, added to a metadata. So for example, in this case, uh, we make the distinction between API, downloads, uh, to download the files, and in this case, we also have uh, files to be used in GIS, uh, in S3 or QGIS file for the legends, so you have all the various uh, type of files uh, available. And uh, we try to better categorize all this information. You also have the catalog attribute, which is a data model. Uh, in this case, it is, it is described in a, in a PDF that you can download, uh, but also sometimes it is also displayed uh, directly in the metadata uh, record view, so you can uh, browse the attributes and so on. Uh, Geo Network is also uh, more and more used for uh, publishing data sets which may be used in uh, scientific publications and uh, we got more and more requests about uh, improving the way we can cite a data set uh, in scientific publication and for this we have been uh, working on two main items. So one is uh, be able to provide the, uh, the way you can, you should cite this data set uh, in various formats. Um, so HTML text is a common, uh, the simple way to do the citation, but you also have some exchange formats for uh, exchanging citation, like RIS, BIP text, which are um, specific format for this. So we, we worked on this, uh, I think, Geocat team mainly with uh, Canadian uh, project and uh, in France with uh, IFREMER and BRGM. Uh, to cite uh, data sets easily and also be able to register a digital object identifier, DOI, uh, directly from the catalog. So you can uh, register your uh, data site account in your network and create the DOI from the Geo network interface. Uh, in version uh, for we also uh, provide the capacity to create uh, easily a focus on subset of records uh, that can be called uh, semantic portal. This, in this case at EEA we are using uh, this for um, semantic portals, focusing on biodiversity, marine water and so on. Uh, but this you can configure for uh, whatever uh, focus you want to provide on your catalog. Uh, on the slide, you have a link to the workshop uh, details where we uh, try to learn how, how to configure this and uh, if you want to, to test this. Uh, some more uh, technical changes. We, in the harvesting, we also added uh, the capacity to harvest a JSON uh, source, uh, which allows to harvest open data portals and tools like uh, CCAN, Open Data Soft, uh, which is quite, uh, it's an harvester quite flexible, so you, where you can define how to uh, collect information from the JSON and create metadata in GeoNetwork, which will be stored in XML as GeoNetwork is uh, using XML for storing the information. We also provide uh, improvement for uh, editing and doing batch editing, search and replace, and batch editing in the database. Uh, we did uh, major changes on the libraries uh, between version 3 and 4, uh, including technical uh, library like Spring and Hibernate, moving to major versions. Um, and also uh, for uh, security updates. Uh, this year in 2022, so Yeroun uh, organized the code sprint uh, in Bolzena, uh, north to Rome. So after two years, uh, we get back to the monastery and uh, have been able to work together uh, in this uh, nice place. Uh, we have been working on uh, code quality. So uh, Camp to Camp team uh, set it up Sonar Cloud, which is a tool which helps us uh, analyzing the contributions. And the Geo Network code base is quite old using various languages. Uh, with various level of expertise uh, in contributors. So it helps uh, learning good practice and uh, improving the code uh, quality of the application. So this was one topic in uh, Bolzena. Uh, we also uh, added some new uh, preview of the data. 
uh, in the coming versions. Some features which were uh, available in version 4.0, uh, even in version 3, but were more uh, accessible in uh, the map application. Now you can, from the record view, uh, preview the WMS, but you also have the capability to index the data and do full text search in the data. So for example, in the sample uh, river basin of Africa, we, we have in Geo Network since long time, uh, you can search for Niger and you get the river basin of Niger and you can also do uh, aggregations. Uh, last point for 421, so uh, in Bolzena we also worked uh, on some uh, steps missing from the migration to Elasticsearch, for example, the Inspire Atom services. We worked on this with Jose Garcia from Geocat in Spain uh, during the code sprint. Uh, we also added uh, some options to easily uh, drag and drop files when you simply want to upload a simple resource uh, in your uh, record. And we are currently working on trying to uh, improve the indexing performance. We moved to Elasticsearch, it was quite fast, and then we added some new stuff in uh, the indexing process, and uh, it was uh, a bit slower, so now we are trying to, to improve what we did in the last year. Uh, and we will uh, finalize this before uh, releasing 421 probably in September. We are also currently, we worked last, uh, yesterday with Judy Garnett uh, on the Log4G2 migration, which is uh, on its way. So this will be the, the major changes for the coming versions. We are still uh, maintaining some uh, schema plugins, uh, the one uh, HNAP is the one for the North America, maintained by Joe team. So basically you have one release of this schema uh, for each release of Joe Network, as you have to use the same uh, versions. Joe is also updating and maintaining the Dutch profiles for services and datasets uh, for Joe Network. Uh, we have more and more users using the ISO 19115-3. There is a, a link to, to a presentation here uh, that you can get more details. We, are, uh, we did an experiment about DCAD 2. There is probably a work plan by the Flemish uh, regions uh, this year later. But for the time being, it's still something quite uh, experimental to, to use. Uh, maybe you don't want to do this. Hello, welcome. Um, yeah, so a mature project uh, as GeoCat is, or GeoNetwork is, sorry. Uh, it started in 2000, so it's, uh, it's really uh, an old beast, I would say. Uh, and we still use code that we've been building in, uh, in that time. Uh, so that has technical challenges and uh, frustrations uh, also in the team from time to time. Um, so there's technical challenges that, uh, that we are facing uh, as, as a group. Um, at the same time, we also see that, that because of the maturity of the project, it provides so many uh, facilities and, and, uh, and features that, uh, that it's also hard to just start rebuilding something. Um, so we face problems in updating uh, libraries, old libraries that uh, may be uh, vulnerable for, for problems. Um, we're looking at strategies how to how to uh, deal with those. Uh, I'm sure that with all the brain power that we have in the developer team, we'll find solutions for that. Uh, but it's definitely uh, challenges that I think every old project faces. Uh, we have uh, moved slowly to to have uh, combined searches for metadata as well as data. Uh, those those are challenging. Uh, but really interesting because not only do you look at uh, what was written in the metadata record, which most people don't really like to write, uh, but you can also drill down into the data immediately. Uh, and when you search on a particular road, if you are looking for a particular road network uh, a data set, uh, you may find the metadata uh, even though nothing was written about that road in the metadata record itself. So linking those two is really something that, uh, that I think is important in the future. Another one that is not listed here is, is how do you search in multiple catalogs. Uh, GeoNetwork has 
a lot of facilities to harvest or to expose metadata to other catalogs and harvest from other catalogs. Uh, how could you do this in, uh, in a live uh, or it, in an instant uh, that you think of something? Uh, and how do you then find uh, data from other catalogs? This is something that I'm sure we'll be looking into also in the coming year. Um, so those, those are some of the technical challenges, uh, more of the community challenges. Uh, we have a really solid group of developers. Uh, at the same time, it's hard to find people that you know, are able to dive into, into the, especially the core uh, code, because it can be quite complex. Uh, how do you attract new contributors to such a project? Uh, this is a challenge that we face. Uh, at the same time, we see that sometimes a new developer comes in, slowly starts doing some things, but people also tend to leave. Um, and the last thing uh, that we have some challenges, uh, which I think is very healthy, is, is how do you actually uh, develop new things do you do those on the core application, or do you make separate applications that do particular tasks around catalogs? Uh, and I think we're more and more moving in the direction of having smaller applications do specific things. So we have, uh, in the context of the European Inspire project, developed a harvester that is a complete separate application from uh, the core geo network that does the harvesting very well. Then there's another application that does things like link analyzing. Uh, so knowing that all the links in that metadata or even in the services described in the metadata are healthy or not, uh, this is important. And there will be a presentation tomorrow in the European Commission track about this uh, together with Jordi on how we've uh, worked on that technically. Um, then there's also projects that are looking at the user interface, uh, how do we make a very easy metadata editor. The editor is quite complex uh, because it's really built around metadata standards, uh, but we also want to make sure that, uh, that there's lower level entry for people that just want to do a very simple description. And uh, Camp to Camp and Flora has been working on that uh, quite a bit. Uh, so, Flora, next slide. You ah, also no, some social. It's a moved in. So we also have health and happiness <laughs> in the community. When we meet in Bolsena, we we also have other developers coming uh, from other companies, other projects. Uh, we cook. Uh, we have dinners together, lunches together. Uh, go out for for tours this year. Since we didn't have uh, a Bolsena code sprint for two years, uh, we actually had it, uh, Francois suggested to do a two week uh, code sprint, which we did, and it was really fun. Um, and we basically uh, had a vote and decided to do this also next year. Uh, so make it a two week event where you really have time to sit with each other and, uh, and actually develop things, but also interact and, uh, and be happy. Uh, yeah, so a, a, a quick word on um, um, on a Geo Network UI and a different project we are trying to develop uh, as an alternative to the UI. I think it's uh, worth it mentioning. Um, so where is, where is it? Yes. It's worth it mentioning the all the work that has been done in Geo Network UI project, which, which is uh, within the Geo Network uh, organization as in the state of Geo Network presentation. So there, there will be a presentation on the Data Hub on uh, Friday morning. And uh, it's uh, a project, Geo Network UIs, that try to focus on the user experience and gives alternative uh, UIs for different use cases that um, uh, Geo Network Core addresses. And um, based on this, uh, we would like as Jeroen um, mentioned, we would like uh, to, uh, to improve, or not improve, but uh, to provide an alternative to the, to the editor 
because uh, geo network we figured out that geo network is widely used very spread over the world and uh, not all, uh, by different kind of people that there are people who really use it to be narrowed to specific schemas but there are also people who use it because they need metadata, they need to be inspired compliant, or they just want to have a patrimony or a search service to their, uh, to their data sets. And those people can find the edition too complex. So we would like to provide a facet uh, to simplify the edition process. Um, so there is a participative funding that we are launching. So if you are interested in simplifying the edition of your network, you could just check the information about that and we will talk I think again about that on uh, Friday morning for the for the presentation of Geo Network UI and the data app. So uh, that's all the other presentation so Jeroen was talking about uh, the um, the European uh, harvesting uh, the reopen project to harvest all the metadata uh, there will be uh, the presentation of uh, the Data Hub, which is trying to merge the open data world and the geo data world. Uh, the work on the accessibility on geo network, and uh, that's it. Or oh, another one? <laughs> yeah, there's another one. Yeah. So there's talk about it. But there's another slide. So the first one is on accessibility this afternoon. Uh, by Michel, and it's it's not only around uh, geo network accessibility; it's also around other OSGO applications. Uh, we've been also working on accessibility for geo server, for instance. Uh, so tomorrow morning, uh, the revamped Inspired Geo portal, so the the portal run by and operated by the Joint Research Center of the EU, that will be based on geo network and, and therefore has to be uh, able to do all the reporting uh, of metadata that member countries have to provide. Uh, there's a European inspired data tour, uh, which is diving much more in depth, uh, very technical on how links can be analyzed of all these metadata that are collected and how those can be reported and validated. That's on Friday afternoon. And then I think there's, oops, there was one. Ah, oh, there was, yeah, so and this one is the one that you mentioned uh, on the Data Hub, which is Friday morning. So thank you for listening. Thank you for your great presentation.